Hey guys, Gassy TV here up in the crow's nest next to my crow bro here right next to me. Um, I just want to talk about flask changes. Now we were all a bit, a little bit afraid of the flask changes leading into 3.15, but we spent almost two weeks testing out the changes. And I wanted to talk about these in this video, my concerns, my experiences, and I also want to know you guys' opinions. So do let me know in the comments below what you guys feel about the flask changes. Let me just climb down from the crow's nest here. Oh, there we go. Yeah, you see, the thing is with PoE is that speed is the name of the game, right? It's an ARPG game. We want to go fast. That's why we have this beautiful vessel that we're sailing the Seven Seas Ray class on. Normally, we'd chug in a dump a shitload of quick silver flask roll with adrenaline just to go speedy zoom zoom through maps on this vessel. But 3.15 kind of put a halt on that one. Now, the problem with the speed in the game is that we kind of want to have flask buffs up on a consistent basis. And that's how we make sure that we stay alive. And that's how we keep up the buffs to stay alive versus the harder enemies actually hitting us. Now, I remember on Reddit posts a lot before 3.15 was launched, we were in a situation where people said it's okay for us to be slower as long as the enemies are not one-shotting us. So basically, it's okay for us not to one-shot them as long as they don't one-shot us. But they, evidently, that's not being changed. We are expected to have Flask as a sort of reactional response to something happening. But when we are getting off-screen one-shot or, you know, a ghosted rare with proximity shield that we didn't kill off-screen is now leap-slamming on top of us one-shotting as we are somewhat expected to have, you know, a basil flask or a granite flask running to cover from that damage, which is actually impossible. At the same time, they've given us some orbs to automate a lot of systems when it comes to different ailments, uh, removal flask stuffs, so that we can save our wrists. I don't know, it feels like there's a lot of problems with this, so I just want to dive into these a little bit more in depth by showing you here on the screen. So let's just dive into it. So the problem is that we are expected to have such a flask like this one, for example, which is a armor granite flask, which was nerfed and then probably or preferably rolled with an iron skin so we can increase the efficiency of that armor for this my this glass cannon build that I have on the screen right now. That flask alone puts me on 26% fist damage mitigation, which is not any anything drastic in terms of uh, defense increasements. However, when the flask is not active, you can see that that is giving me 22% physical damage reduction. That's a massive amount of damage reduction that you're getting. And you couple that with something uh, like a basal flask, which in this case is taunting nearby enemies, not the best way you can do it. This has been tested out for other reasons with this build. All I'm saying is that these flasks are supposed to be situational or reactional buffs according to GGG based on the changes because they're soaking up a ton of your flask charges as well as the enemies granting fewer flask charges now on death, which means that we're now not able to run consistently, at least to some degree. We are able to bypass this to some degree with the overflowing chalice to make sure that as long as we have a build that clears very reliably, you are able to run with a almost 100% uptime of these flasks, but not every build is able to clear that fast. Not every build is able to run with an overflowing chalice. And this is more tricky when it comes to life-based builds that wants to use life flasks. For a CI build or a low life build, it's a bit easier to remain to the point where you're actually able to run with utility flasks to, to grant you these buffs. So that's one of the biggest problems I have with it, where the game seems to force us into a situation where we have to scale defense stats that we're expected to have to counteract the damage that we're seeing from enemies at the same time as GG wants us to use them in a reactional state, which is almost impossible when most of the cases where we need them is in situations where it's impossible for us to tell that we are about to take that damage. Versus bosses, you don't normally need these flasks. To some degree, you do, especially for melee builds. And in those situations, this kind of system would actually be, you know, appropriate. And I assume that I agree with that. That's a very good way to deal with it. But the way they've sorted the flask changes doesn't go well with that strategy. So I wanted to talk about a little bit more about the immunities as well on this topic, which is uh, for me, I have a dousing flask here, for example, which is automatically used when I become ignited. Now, the problem with the flask changes together with this is that the automatic usage of these flasks are pretty goddamn cool. And these are achieved through using the instilling orbs, which adds an enchantment to a utility flask to make it be automatically used when a specific condition is met. And we have other flasks such as this one, which increases the charge recovery, but you gain no charges during the flask effect, which is achieved through using the other orb, which is the enkindling orb, which adds an enchantment to a utility flask that will improve it, but prevent it from gaining charges during the flask effect. Now, what's really cool with this 
is that you can actually automate your entire flask setup. You can literally just have flask automatically trigger when you get an ailment. The problem with this is that most of the cases, you would in that case have a flask that is specifically only there to be used if you get a certain ailment or a certain situation occurs. And this would be really cool with flask that would be used when you're taking a savage hit to give you a spark of more defense when you're dropping low in HP. Now for that purpose, that would be pretty cool. However, take a flask such as the granite flask, which is a defensive flask that is supposed to mitigate damage that is incoming from you in terms of armor to mitigate physical damage taken. Now, if we were to use this flask, I have a reused at the end of flask. So when I start a map, I can click this flask once and it will automatically keep reusing. Now, the problem with this is obviously that if you're not clearing consistently or if you stop to loot something or interact with something like the Expedition Lee mechanic, you're going to be in a position where this flask is going to run out of charges and the next packs or two or three packs later, you're going to have no flask charges and there's no buff effect rolling from this flask. Now, this causes the problem I was talking about before where you don't have the uptime of it and you're going to be in a situation where there's a very high likelihood that you're going to take damage that you cannot prevent or cannot uh, prepare for yourself or build up that mitigation prior to that hit happening, which is expected out of the current state of damage that is coming from enemies in the current state of the game. I'm not very happy with this at all. Uh, now, I don't mind the flask nerfs. I don't mind the way new way of playing. I, I think the biggest problem I've had has been honestly getting used to using the flask in this way, because my problem is that we all normally run with a heat flask that removes freeze effects. And uh, by having that, I would click that flask before I open rare boxes because I knew I was going to be immune to this. And then I'd be there moving away. So if it had a freeze modifier, I'd be fine. Now, a problem I've been encountering has more to do with me having troubles adjusting to the flask system, which is why I'm I've been waiting with this video for almost two weeks now. Uh, because in more cases than not, that would be frozen and then not have flask charges to remove the freeze effect. Obviously, uh, the solution is for me to, you know, play slower and simply look at my flask and see, okay, I'm going to click this if I'm getting frozen and then click the box, right? But that time, I might as well just start identifying boxes. Uh, and at that point, we'd be forcing ourselves to play slower to be safer. And I, I think that's fair. I, I completely think that is fair. I really do. I don't think it's fair to have flask be expected for us to use as a uh, reactional state for to mitigate the incoming damage when incoming damage is something that we are in most more cases than not not able to foresee or able to even fathom that we are going to be getting a leap slam from someone two screens away that is ghosted and is a super big ass rare with a prox shield and that's going to one shot us if it hits us but we don't see it so we cannot prepare for it we cannot put a preemptive flask or preemptive buffs to, to mitigate that incoming damage because it's happening off screen. Similar to how builds with a ton of defenses can still get one shot by things from off screen, like a white skeleton happening to shoot an arrow that you barely see and you get hit by it. And that just happened to be a crit because he stood next to some two rares that gave him increased crit and one gave him extra substantial fist damage. And because of the map mods, you just got one shot by a white skeleton off screen. We cannot foresee these, we cannot preemptively prepare for this, and that's where the problem kicks in. With these fast changes, I feel like they need to be something happening with the enemy's damage output, because it feels it feels to me that a band-aid solution in the past has been for enemies to do a stupid amount of damage to try to counteract the ongoing power creep, which has only excelled the, uh, the pressure on power creeping builds to just make sure that you off screen more, you freeze more, you make sure that everything off screen is dead. So when you get there, instead of encountering danger, you're encountering loot on the ground. And that's not the way the game is supposed to be played according to their philosophy, but they can't just change half of that aspect. They need to change both aspects. There's two sides of this coin, and I'm very upset with these changes for the most part. Another thing I wanted to mention is actually the um, warding flask. I don't think I have one because they're completely useless. Uh, actually, I do have it on here. Um, interesting. So the way warding flask now works is that the flask effect is not removed. Uh, sorry, the flask effect does not queue. And the warding is basically just saying remove a curse on use. That's all it says. This means that if you are playing a map with a curse effect, you would remove that curse and it would immediately afterwards reapply that curse. I am okay with this. That is perfectly fine. The problem is that 95% of all curse modifiers or curse applying enemies or mechanics in this entire game 
will reapply their curse instantaneously. The only time this would work is versus very, very, very specific bosses that will cast a curse and would then allow you to remove that curse and therefore have use of the warding flask. The other aspect is boxes cursing you. Other than that, pretty much everything else, the uh, type of monsters that are cursing for the most part will reapply it as soon as you remove it. And all of these things are just so stupid. They, I've seen on Twitter some uh, solutions have been that the a flask would remove a curse and then give you a grace period time of, say, four seconds, similar to how they change, for example, dousing, which would grant me immunity to ignite if I removed an ignition with it for four seconds. I'm not saying that we should be curse immune for four seconds if we remove the curse, because that would allow us to run curse maps by having very high clear speed with the overflowing chalice system. But I would feel that having the effect of us lowering the efficiency of curses that are applied to us after we have removed a curse would be a suitable middle ground to still fit their philo philosophy at the same time as not making warding flask completely fucking useless other than that i'm, I'm kind of happy with the way the orbs are working with the automation of the system i think that still after two weeks into the league that it still requires us to be in a position where we need to get used to how these are played i feel like i'm not using my flask much at all uh, they feel more reactional absolutely with the exception of something like a granite flask I am honestly considering just to drop this entirely. I don't feel like using it because I feel like the times where I need it, it's not having any charges. I feel like I, I'm only getting once in a blue moon a situation where the flask would actually be beneficial for me to have because of the fact that it runs out of charges. And when I have it up, it's good. When I'm clearing fast, it's good. But in any cases where that doesn't follow or go in line with, with the way it's played, I end up having no charges and then there's no use of the flask and that's in many cases more cases than not is when i've encountered a situation where i take the damage that i shouldn't have been taking because i didn't have the flask yet I i'm not sure how to feel about these utility flasks maybe they should have a longer duration i, I don't know it's, it's just very hard to balance because i can't really see how they can fix this without just reverting the flask shit into the flask piano system again but keeping the orbs and we all can agree that that would be nice but it would not fall in line with the philosophy of the game where ggg is heading so that's why again i'm going to ask you guys here in the youtube channel let me know in the comments below what you guys feel about the flask changes now that we have given it almost two weeks of game time i'm very interested to hear what you guys have to say about it the troubles you've encountered your feedback on the flask changes and um your takes generally about them i don't want to take too long in this video I uh, hope to see you guys comments in the below here. I'll read them all as always. Um, yeah, so without further ado, hit the like button, subscribe for more content. And thanks so much for supporting the channel. Until next time, stay safe and keep rocking.